This week on Crosby. So, just how do we minister to gays and lesbians anyway? Fire them. Refuse to commune them. Uh, walk with them and their issues? <laughs> Plus, Burt Warren getting jiggy with Muslims. And more on Obamacare, religion, and contraception. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, everybody. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, St. Luke's Lutheran Church. It's really good to be back. Uh, it's been, <laughs> Dale and I were figuring out, about five weeks, I think. Uh, we just had all kinds of things coming up. Uh, I remember he had was going to be out of town. And then uh, <clears throat> we had the Super Bowl weekend, out, and we had we were having people over. And then Dale was out of town again, and then he had some stuff going on with family, and I had some other stuff going on. So it's just been, you know, a long, a very difficult opportunity for us to get back. I tell you, it's just been, you know, I was just kidding, Dale. I said, you know what, you, you know, we used to do this all the time, but then we were at churches where nothing was going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But with these churches now, they've just got these, you know, awesome ministries that are happening, and, you know, they're just, you know, demanding more and more of our time, which is, uh, you know, really cool for us, you know, that's what we want to be about, but it's, it's you know, makes things like this a little more stressful. Uh, with any luck, you'll see this sometime the other side of Easter, depending on when Dale gets the thing edited, you know. <laughs> well, given, given that I had a post our uh, pre-Super Bowl episode, um, well, <laughs> a couple <of> days ago. <laughs> a month after the game finished, yeah, yeah, like I said, you know. So should we give our Easter greetings now, you know? <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be current, you know. And, uh, either that or people feel like, whoa, man, I'm just, I remember all these stories. This is a month ago, man. I feel like I'm a time machine here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, getting Mr. P, Mr. Peabody and Sherman in the Wayback Machine. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We have a town up here, by the way. And when I got up here, I pronounced it Peabody, and everybody got mad at me. And everybody goes, no, that's the dog with Sherman. Because <laughs> they pronounce it Peabody. So, so yeah, I, 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 things I learned in Boston, I tell you. Important you know these things. Important you know these things. Important you know these things. But it's good to be back and stuff. And uh, I picked the stories this week, and I thought we would start off with Gail's, uh, Gail's favorite topic here. He just, he just loves talking about uh, uh, homosexual people. Hold, hold on, hold and on. So I want to deal with wait, stuff. Before we <laughs> yeah. get into that, there is one other story that, that we're not really covering this week, but I just want to mention it. Um, the uh, the Jonah Ossuary is probably what it's going to come to be known as. Um, there was... Uh, Oh, about a year ago, there was uh, the Jesus family tomb uh, where they found this uh, bone box uh, that said Jesus, son of Joseph. Um, and, uh, and, and I mean, nobody really, any scholar that knows anything about archaeology just dismissed it. And they said it's just a standard Jewish family. No, nothing to see here. Move along. And um, now the same group of, of people um, found a, a sort of adjacent tomb. And, uh, and there's a... An inscription which they claim uh, shows uh, the story of Jonah, a guy being swallowed by a big fish and then coming out of it, and then some reference to um, God, Yahweh, raised this body or something like that. All right. So if you've heard about this and you're kind of wondering about it, um, just like last year, it's all of the um, the scholars are dismissing it and saying, because these guys are saying, oh, look, this is the oldest Christian artifact ever found. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't really actually say what their claim it says. And uh, and the, the pictures on it, it's not a fish. Uh, it's actually a picture of a tomb. So it may or may not be a reference to resurrection, but, um, but there were a lot of Jews that believed in the resurrection. We know that from the Bible because it says the Pharisees believed in the resurrection and the Sadducees didn't. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so, so yeah, it's just a generic, you know, uh, Jewish tomb. It's nothing to see here. Move along. So, all right. That's anyway. right. So, so, anyway, so, uh, uh I'm going to start off with a, uh, story, um, sent to us by our uh, buddy Carlos up in, uh, um, uh, Canada. And it was the, the, from the Canadian Lutheran. And a woman by the name of Ken Gable, and I can give her a name because it's on the article. 
And uh, she is lesbian. She has a same-sex attraction. She, however, is celibate. And she was raised, she said, in a, in a, in a, in a Lutheran church. Uh, she went to Concordia University in Alberta. She's in the choir. Uh, she's in her church. She went to church every Sunday. Uh, and she has a strong faith. And she says she really struggles. She struggles because it seems to be the message is, if you're gay, don't come to our church. And, uh, um, you know, there's no comfort, comfort. It seems to be condemned since we, you know, we say love the sin, love the sinner and hate the sin. But man, it's just, it's just not there. Right. You know, have a hard um, time separating the two. Right. Um, and she says, you know what? It, and it's the church's responsibility to offer God's word in Christ's forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, and she says, you know, and why are, why are gay LCC members, Lutheran Church of Canada, you know, and I would say LCMS too, hesitant to come out because Christians don't distinguish. It's not the act that is condemned. It's the person. Even if we are non-practicing homosexuals who accept Scripture's teaching on same-sex relationships, we still still feel that condemnation. It's the fact that we are gay that is the problem. We must repent of our desires and not be gay anymore. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and I just thought she did a wonderful job of expressing the issue. Yesterday, I got to, got a chance, uh, LCMS President Matt Harrison was up here in Boston at First Lutheran downtown. And, um, um, and he was talking, he said, you know, it is not enough for us to say it's homosexuality is wrong. We need to come up with a way of ministering to these, to, 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 to gays and lesbians who are hurting, who are sad, who are caught in sin. Um, they, we need to have a place where they can go. Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, find support and care and nurture, and that's exactly what I think she's getting at too. You know, how do we bring care, nurture, and and support? Right. I mean, you know, <clears throat> um, this all right. This article broke my heart. All right. Um, it, it expresses what what I have said, but obviously from a much more personal standpoint. Um, so I, I agree, uh, you know, theologically, I, you know, from my heart and all that, you know, um, but I don't, you know, I don't experience that. And so I have never experienced that sort of, um, uh, condemnation. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, it talks about desires. She says, which desires? The desire to be loved, to have a family, to come at home at night and have someone ask, how was your day? The desire for companionship. You know, you you have to repent of that desire. You mm-hmm. know. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I thought about, wow, because those are things that I have. All right. And those are things that are, that mean so much to me. And the thing is, and, and she mentions this, God made us that way. You know, he's, I mean, we are hardwired for relationship, for companionship. I mean, you know, the first time that God said it's not good to be alone is when he was talking about companionship. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and so for someone who is just wired such that they're not able to, um, they don't have those sort of attractions. Um, to be able to have the sort of relationship uh, that God intends for us, you, you can't tell him to be attracted differently. Right. You know? And she says, I, homosexuality is not a choice. I didn't wake up one day and decide to prefer women. Likewise, I can't wake up tomorrow and decide to prefer men. I can't change who I am. God can, but so far, he has not. Mm-hmm. And And so... My heart goes out to this woman and, and for yeah, really. so many, so many other people. Um, I mean, this is, this is a brave thing that she did because this was actually posted on the, um, the magazine of the Lutheran Church Canada. 
Uh, and the fact that she used her name and everything, you know, I, I hope that she doesn't have any fallout from this. Um, she better not. <laughs> but, you know, what it comes down to is, is this is exactly right. That it's one thing to say love the sin and hate the sinner, but it's, um, boy, that's not the way that it usually works. Um, Absolutely. And, and Kim, our heart goes out to you. You, you know, know. I, I have, I, I'd like to propose an alternative expression. Um, instead of saying something like that, like love the sin, hate, or I've, I said it backwards. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I meant. Oh, oh man. Horrible. Oh man. All right. Now we got the, we have tonight. We, we, we have tonight's episode title. <laughs> love the sin. <laughs> hate the sinner. Uh, oh, oh man. Oh, Dale's in good. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, go ahead. So what's your alternative proposal here? <laughs> right. So I like that one. I, that, that one's pretty good right there, man. <laughs> I didn't realize I said it. <laughs> um, instead of, you know, it, it, it should be something like, um, uh, oh, darn, I had this before. Should have written it down. Um, it, it, it should be something like, um, love the sinner and, and pray for those who, who struggle with sin or, you know, or hate the sin. And how about just, how about just love the sinner? You know, don't worry yeah. about the sin because you know what? We're all, we're all infected with sin. It's right. not that God's got special sins out there. And you know, uh, what are we? We are hospitals for sinners. We are places of grace, right? you know? Right. And, uh, that is, that's, that's, what our churches are to be about, you know. I once again, I just love the way she put it, you know. So, kind of, what are we, what are we, you know, what are we asking for? We're asking for Christ's acceptance and forgiveness. I mean, that's what the church is supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah, it's a church's responsibility to offer access to God's word and Christ's forgiveness. You know. Yeah, uh, she gets it. That's, she gets it. She understands it. Um, and I think we need to as well. Um, on the other hand, there are a couple of other places, <laughs> not, not the way to handle this, I don't think. Um, and so one of them is, is really kind of quite strange. Um, and let's go to St. Louis. Um, so there's this gay music teacher in St. Louis, uh, at, uh, St. Anne Catholic School in St. Louis County. And he's worked there for four years. Now, his homosexuality has not been, you know, has been known. I mean, it's not been. The fact that he had a partner um, has been known. I mean, none of this was questioned. He's been with this other man for 20 years. All this has been known. And, and now he announced even, that they're going to go to what? Well, and he's the um, um, the... Artistic director for the Gateway Men's Chorus, which affirms and promotes gay culture and acceptance through excellence in musical performance and education. All right, so he's even involved in some uh, sort of uh, gay acceptance movement kind of stuff. And it says that according to St. Louis Post-Dispatch, his, uh, his orientation was well known. It's not been a secret. Well, okay, so then he announces that he and his partner, who've been together 20 years, are going to go to New York and get married. Probably up to wine country, out there around the Finger Lakes in that area, nice area. And then he's fired. They, 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 they you know, they said uh, they fired him um, because... Um, you know, they were informed by one of its teachers, a Fisher's plan to unite in marriage with an individual of the same sex. With full respect to the individual's basic human dignity, the same sex union opposes Roman Catholic teaching and cannot realize the full potential of marital relationships meant to express. It's, um, you know, I don't get it. Mm hmm. You know, this is I'm this sorry. is sorry. Like, if 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 it was okay before, it's either wrong or it's right. Right, right. This is this is like don't ask, don't tell gone wrong. 
except he did tell him <laughs> it was it was common knowledge and it's like wait, that's a all right drawing the line there is like drawing the line for abortion at birth it's a completely arbitrary line it's 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 going oh we should do something about this right um now i <laughs> It reminded me in a way, um, back in when I was in Rockford, I had this eighth grade girl who she was a member of a Catholic church in town. She was a member of going to our school. And she told me about her priest who was living with his girlfriend in the rectory. And I'm like, what? And yeah, oh yeah, the whole church knew it. It was fine. They were all fine with it. I'm like, what? I mean, I just didn't make any sense to me and stuff. You know, he's living with his girlfriend at the rectory, you know, and the church is fine with this. I, mean, I okay, she's eighth grade. I didn't be- quite believe her. Okay, I thought you know, I was trying to try to you know. Two weeks later, two or three weeks later, it was in the newspaper, and they hit now. Now you know, then the diocese removed him, but the diocese had known about this earlier. It but now the public, public so. you know, that they, they, they had to, you know, they did. So I think it's kind of, this reminds me of almost the same thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't ask, don't tell. Gone wild. Uh, <laughs> just this uh, n- another analogy. This is like um, uh, condemning a couple that's not married that gets pregnant when you knew that there was stuff going on that shouldn't have been before, and you never said anything. And oh, oh, well, you got pregnant. Well, that's horrible. No, getting pregnant isn't the horrible part. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, it's if you're going to talk about the sin, getting pregnant is not a sin. Right. <laughs> Somewhere or another, I had read about this in another another story that that the school felt they could act now because of the Hosanna Tabor case. But the Hosanna Tabor case simply said. That the church has 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 authority over who its ministers are. The ministers cannot then sue for discrimination. Mm-hmm. But he was not a minister. He, he was a hired teacher. Uh, now he may have been an outwill employee, uh, and so he may not have no legal recourse. But to me, and you know, I hope you understand where Dale and I are coming from. This is a double standard. You know, if it was if it's wrong for him to marry his gay partner, then it was wrong for them to have him working there for four years when it was. You know, openly known that he was a partnered gay man. Right, right, and and it does it cites that um, that he uh, let's see, the diocese says it supports the school's action as it's in full compliance with the Christian witness statement signed by every educator in the Catholic school system. Ah, there you go. All right, if he signed this um, Christian witness statement, all right, then that would apply to his relationship that he was in before this announcement of getting married. Right. So, um, so yes, they do have recourse to fire him because of his actions. But if they were going to do that, they should have done it a long time ago. Not now. Right. I mean, now. this is, it, it makes no sense. This is like, right. you were just hoping that, that to bury it under the rug. And it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, you're, you're hoping to hide it. And it wasn't being hidden. Everybody knew it anyway. Right. And so what are they, what are they telling the kids and the parents by this? What, what witness have they been sending for four years? Yeah. I mean, when I talk to this, this eighth grade girl, it's, it's wrong to live together without being married. Well, why is my priest doing it? I mean, you know, you, 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 you're shooting your moral, your, right. your morality in the foot. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you talk about Christian witness. You know, and it's a bad if deal. You, it's you know, it's it's if you if you're gonna rubber stamp it, then you're gonna say it's right. And um, you know, right. if you and if you're gonna have a statement, you know, I mean, some schools um, maybe don't have a, a don't make them sign a statement. Or if you're uh, maybe if you're a hired teacher, it's different from something else where. Um, from a called teacher or something like that where, well, this person's just hired and so we don't hold them to the same standard or, you know, or something like that. If, if they wanted to do that, fine. But, you know, then that's clear and it's consistent. Um, whereas in this case, yeah, it, I mean, he, he wrote a, it said he wrote a note to the, um, 
to the families that basically, you know, encourage this to be an opportunity for, um, for families to parents to talk to their kids about these issues and things like that. And, um, and he said, you know, his concern is that what's the message that the kids are going to get hide who you are. Don't let anybody know, um, you know, conceal your identity and, and, and stuff like that, which is, you know, which is basically what's being taught here. Well, what, no, what's being taught is, um, you know, it, it, anything else is perfectly okay to, but don't publicly go get married in, in New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because if they had never said that they were going to go get to New York and get married, then this, he, he, it wouldn't have happened. I mean, you know, the, the, you know, it has nothing to tell anybody who you are because everybody knew. Well, right. I mean, it's it it becomes about politics. Oh yeah, it's, it, it's, it's we're it's, we're it, against you know. the the um, political actions being taken in New York, and we need to make a a statement about that. And we're going to use this guy as the scapegoat. Right. It's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. Okay. On the other hand, okay. Now, I really think that this this Catholic school and this priest and diocese are wrong there in St. Louis. Another situation that came up in Gaithersburg, I think it's Maryland. Um, I might be wrong about that. Hang on here. I'm waiting! <clears throat> I knew a sneeze was coming. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, and here I think... Uh, I, uh, yeah, Gaithersburg, Maryland. I, I think... The priest handled this as well as you possibly could have. Um, <clears throat> now, there's a story I got from Chicago Tribune, and then I found a couple other stories on LifeSite News afterwards about the same situation. So basically, there is, there was a woman. Her name is Barbara Johnson. She is gay and has a lesbian partner. And her mother, named Loretta, was a faithful Catholic. And Lo Loretta. Uh, L O E T T A, Loetta. And uh, she died. And uh, they had a funeral mass for her. Uh, Father Marcel Garanzio. Uh, let's call him Father Marcel. <clears throat> now, Father Marcel, by the way, happens to be a very conservative priest. And he is, you know, I mean, he is, he's in the Benedict 16th model. This is what the church teaches. This is, we're not going to deviate from what the church teaches. End of story. And um, so, um, so during uh, 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 just before the mass, uh, just before the time of communion, he said only church members in a state of grace would be allowed to receive communion. <clears throat> and so Johnson got up and she went up to the presenter herself for communion, and the priest covered the chalice and says. I cannot give you communion because you live with a woman. And in the eyes of the church, that is a sin. I seem to have a thing for sinners. Well, I seem to have a thing for sinning. Um, you Check, know, please. the archdiocese says, um, thought the priest acted wrong. They said, um, questions about the person's right to receive communion should be addressed privately and was not policy to publicly reprimand worshipers. Uh, now, by the way, I, uh, uh, according to LifeSite News and, and some article, couple articles there by people who were there that day, she actually went to, to talk to the priest before the service, she and her brother. And the woman went with her, and she said, this is my lover. So that's how the priest knew. Um, and I think the priest handled it properly. Well, I think that right at that point he should have told her. I mean, did when they went? I think he did. Oh, he did in advance. Well, I have to look to see if he did or not. Uh, uh, um, you know, because something was, was going on, and then he wanted to continue the conversation. He said, and, and and the other woman actually blocked his path and wouldn't let him talk to her. Because okay, but he made it quite clear that this was he did not believe this is what God wanted. All right, if uh, you know, if if he made every effort in advance to to say, um, you know. This is the, we need to talk about this, and this is this is an issue, you know. And and they try to do it privately. Um, then yeah, he's totally right. Uh, it gets a little stickier um, if he hadn't. So and um, 
and and the article here in the Chicago Tribune does not cover that. So I'm glad that you did a little more um, mm -hmm. background check on this one. Um, Cause yeah, it, you know, to just do that out of the blue and um, you know, at a funeral, no less where emotions are running high and everything else, boy, that's a no win situation. Right. Um, um, but, and, and there's a Eucharistic minister also to Shabin communion that day. And it, that was right next to him. And he said, they said, according to this, says he said it so quietly that the person standing next to him didn't even hear what she was, he was saying. Um, Oh, well then, yeah, especially if he had, yeah, if he had said it real loud so that everybody could hear, you know, um, it, that would be even worse, but he said it very quietly. Um, when it sounds like then if he was making that announcement beforehand, that was sort of like, all right, let's just, you know, kind of make that clear before we go in here. Like he was kind of letting her know without singling her out. You know, if he said only those that are. Um, you know, in the state of grace, then, you know, like, uh, hey, by the way, without pointing fingers, um, right. It's like, like, please okay, I mean, don't start something. <laughs> don't, don't I make mean, me make a difficult decision. Right. I, I mean, you know, uh, uh um, yeah, the, the, the Archbishop wrote a formal letter of apologies telling her, I'm sorry, what should have been a celebration of your mother's life in light of her faith, Jesus Christ, was overshadowed by a lack of pastoral sensitivity. Uh, I don't know. Come on. This woman, this woman has just come up to you and told you something. You're sitting back going, okay, I know this woman's now living in a sinful situation and she's presenting herself for communion. She's not giving me any any opportunity to talk to her beforehand. Yeah, this is. And what do I do? Yeah, she's thrown down. She was challenging him. I, I, so, I. That's how I see it. I mean, that's if I mean, given given that information, you know, and it's not, it's not. Hey, I'm, I'm. I want you to know this is the situation. I'm really struggling with it, uh, but you know, I, I really, uh, you know all the things you can cover in five minutes before right. a funeral. But, you know, um, boy, for her to, to just sort of throw down the gauntlet and then, you know, come up, boy, you know, communion is just not a place for throwing down the gauntlet. It's just not appropriate. Right. You know, well, you know, I, I want to go a step further and this is why I think the Roman Catholic church is wrong in having a Eucharist at public occasions like funerals and weddings. This is why I refused to, to celebrate the Eucharist at a, at a wedding or a funeral, because you don't know what anybody believes. You have no opportunity to do pastoral care, mm -hmm. and a situation like this might come. Yeah, yeah, you got a room full of the, – the majority of the people there are complete strangers. And, I mean, you have a situation like this that's all of a sudden just thrown at you. Now what's he going to do? Um, you know, and, um, uh, you know, and she goes out and gets all the news media, you know, and everybody, oh, you poor thing that the church is being so cruel. Well, no, you're not living in accordance with the church. You know, what do you besides that, do? she knew exactly what was going to happen because this was her mother's church. Right. So, you know, whether... No, oh, okay, so maybe her mom moved and she didn't grow up in that particular church. All right. But she knows the teachings of the Catholic Church. Right. Right. Um <clears throat> and um uh, it said she was uh, she was upset that this guy was doing the, the the funeral anyway because, you know, he was you know, he, he is strict. I mean, um you know, we've got <laughs> we got a priest up here not far from me and I mean, he, you know, Man, you know, you're Jewish when taking me, you know, I think he, I think it, I think it's okay by him, you know, I mean, he just, he, he's made that kind of clear, you know, anybody's welcome to his altar. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, and I, I'm sure she'd find the church that taught that. But, you know, that he was not one of them. And, 
I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, you know, given that situation, what would I have done? And I, I you know, I, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think at the end of the day, you got to stand before God and say, this is your supper, Lord. Who do you allow it to suffer? How do I distribute it? As I believe you want it distributed. Right. You know, yeah. I am a steward of your mysteries and I'm responsible. I'm, I'm accountable to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to who are you afraid of offending? Someone right. who's, who's, you know, going to try to challenge you and, and, and basically make a, a, a public issue at, at their own mother's funeral. Um, or God. And then this woman, I mean, later on, you know, went out and says she's not. I will not be satisfied until this 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 priest is removed from the parish. Um, was it uh, what was it um, Huffington Post? She said, uh, you know, um, I think everyone has their gifts, and my family believes that performing the responsibility of a parish priest does not fall under his list of gifts. No, yeah, that was in the Chicago Tribune article too. <laughs> oh, that's in the Chicago Tribune. Okay. So, so yeah, and, and she's really, you know, qualified here to make that sort of um, judgment. You know, judgment. Yeah. See, one thing we, we we don't even know is what even her actual relationship with the Catholic Church is. Right. You know, I mean, you know, is she a faithful member of the parish? Is she just a visiting? We don't we don't know anything about that. I mean, you know, I mean, are you? Do you go? You know. Yeah, I mean, normally you'd want to handle all this in private, but that's the problem in a situation like this. You can't. Mm-hmm. You're stuck and you have to deal with it. Yeah. Now, I, I had a situation once where there was somebody that, that came to me. I mean, I've had a couple um, where somebody came to me and um, and it was it was very clear that their beliefs were not in line with, with ours. And um, I said, you know, I, I think it would be better to wait until we have... Uh, time. I, I'd love to sit down and talk with you afterward, or, or something, in a, or another day, um, and, and talk about our differences. But I, I think there's some pretty important differences that we have that we need to work out first. And um, I had some people that were pretty offended. Uh, one did come and sit down uh, and talk with me another day. Uh, another one, I just kind of got through the grapevine from the family and friends that had brought her. Um, you know, that she was really upset and I offered to talk to her and she declined the offer. And I mean, you know, this is a tough call. There's, there's times where, um, in order for us to remain faithful to our calling, we have to make hard decisions and, right. and it's, and it's, it's going to offend people. And I mean, especially given, uh, I mean, th- this whole concept of closed or close communion, um, this is the historical position of the Christian church. I mean, all the way back, all the way back to, mm-hmm. to apostolic times. All right. This isn't something new. All right. Open communion. That's new within what the past hundred years or so. Something. I mean, it's, it's a very recent thing. And, but because it's so widespread in, um, in mainline and, and evangelical churches, uh, you know, it's, it's become seen as it's, it's the majority. And so it's, it's seen as, uh, the sort of official, um, this is what, what is really Christian. Um, but you know what, that hasn't been the case. And, um, so, but yeah, because of that, at least a lot of, of misunderstandings, you know, you think you're better than us or, you know, it's just all kinds of things that if people just, you know, listen, it's, it's, it's not out of arrogance. It's not out of, um, you know, anything like that. It's, it's, Hey, you know what? Um, Christ has this great gift for us and, but I want you to understand, you know, what you're really receiving here. Um, you know, I, I use the expression, this is, you know, this, in this cup, that's liquid forgiveness. Um, you know, it's it, it's the real blood of Christ. Uh, t- today, I, um, I, I when I when I distribute um, the way we do it at our church, I just distribute the the host, the bread, um, Jesus' body, and um, and an elder. The elders follow me with the the common and individual cups, 
And um, and, and one of the things I've I've started doing in the past year is uh, just sort of changing the way that I say it instead of using the same words every time. Um, I, I tweak it a little bit to sort of follow with the theme of of the day. And um, so today, since I was preaching on uh, Jesus cursing the fig tree and um, and afterward where he talks about forgive you, uh, forgive your brothers, and I, so I talked a lot about forgiveness. And um, and so as as I was distributing, I said, you know, Jesus when he was hanging on the cross spoke uh, words of forgiveness with his mouth. And now he gives you that same body that was hanging on the cross so that you can take that forgiveness into your mouth. You know, so it's from his mouth to your mouth. And, um, you know, so this is a tremendous gift, but, you know, most people, uh, people outside of, um, what really nowadays it's like, the Lutheran Church, the Roman Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox, and some Anglicans and Episcopalians, um, you know, are are really the only ones that have some, uh, officially at least, some sense of that that's really Jesus' body and blood there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Calvinists to some degree, but they see it a little differently. But um, yeah. My so. goodness, though, talking about forgiveness in church, what has gotten into you, man? I just don't get it. Um, well, well. So, okay. Another big thing that really kind of hit this week um, was an uh, 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 article in the Orange County Register. Rick Warren builds bridges to Muslims. And uh, he says uh, he's going to start a new effort called the King's Way to bring evangelical Christians and Muslims together. Um, he says, uh, and, and, and they started this, this peace center to do all kinds of neat things. Um, and he says he found out he found out he's living right next door to a, 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 Muslim, a Muslim. And so he began to kind of a dialogue with them. Um, and uh, he uh, started off a... Uh, uh, now, according to the article, he says that they presented a document they co-authored offering the differences of the points of agreement in Islam. Uh, it says that they affirm that they believe in one God and share two central commandments, the love of God and the love of neighbor. Um, and uh, what really got most people upset is, number one, it says that they believe that they are, it says that they are worshiping the same God. Uh, and that uh, we agreed that we would not try to evangelize each other. So there's an agreement then that uh, Saddleback Church would not try any to uh, evangelize Muslims anymore. Uh, <clears throat> now, the interesting thing is, although it's saying all this stuff about Rick Warren, <laughs> it says Saddleback representatives declined to make Warren available for comment. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. As it turns out, um, yeah, they never talked to him. And so they, they jumped to a whole bunch of conclusions, right? If you, I mean, there've been lots of times where we've talked about a story here where, um, the, the paper got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the sad reality is, is that as, as our society becomes more and more unchurched, uh, you have more and more unchurched people writing religious articles, uh, covering, you know, religious news, and they don't know what they're talking about. And, uh, and so they get their facts all mixed up and, and, and stuff. And, uh, which appears to be what happened here. Uh, because, uh, Ed Stetzer, uh, who is, uh, um, he is the head of, uh, Lifeway Research, um, he's a great author on, uh, his, his book, Breaking the Missional Code is a phenomenal book. Um, and, and his, his big focus is, uh, getting out in the community and, uh, you know, th- that the whole concept of being missional, uh, which is we're not going to wait for people to come to our church. We're going to go and bring Christ to them. 
And, um, and, and so he interviewed Rick Warren about it. And, uh, this is as a sort of email, he sent him a bunch of questions, Rick, uh, wrote him back. And, um, you know, he, he says to people of other religions worship the same God as Christians. And Warren says, of course not. Christians have a view of God that's unique. We believe Jesus is God. We believe God is a Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not three separate gods, but one God. You know, he, he sort of summarizes the Athanasian Creed here, you know, um, and, uh, you know, no other faith believes Jesus is God. My God is Jesus. Um, and, uh, so, you know, he says, uh, 2.1 billion people who call themselves Christians, whether Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, Pentecostal, Evangelical, and they all have the doctrine of the Trinity in common. Hindus, Muslims, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian Science, Unitarians, everyone else do not accept what Jesus taught about the Trinity. You know, and he goes on and he basically um, says, all right, every, like pretty much everything that's said in that article, yeah, it's not true. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, this it talks about partnership with a mosque. He says, no, no, we encourage people to have friendships with with Muslims, right? Being a friend with somebody or sitting down and or inviting Muslims to your Bible study, that's not a partnership. That's a friendship. Right. Uh, one thing he talks about it says that he had eaten at um, uh, at the breaking of a, a Muslim, uh, of the Muslim fast at the end of Ramadan, and uh, you know he's like, well, yeah, and I, you know, the neighbor next door invited me to, um, you know, invited me to the um, invited me to you know join your dinner with them. Yeah, well, I invite them to join me for a Christmas dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, it's part of be. It's called being polite. You know. Yeah, and you know, he even talks about how they attend. Um, you know, my Muslim friends. Uh, we've invited them to attend our Eastern Christmas services, and they've graciously attended year after year. You know, and so um, you know, they have a potluck when their month of fasting ends. We go to their party. Yeah, you know, it, and, and he compares it with. Uh, the Pharisees criticized Jesus as the friend of sinners because Jesus ate dinner with people that they disapproved of. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, and that's the thing is, oh, well, you're eating at this thing that's sort of a religious festival. Does that mean you're rubber stamping it? No, they know that your beliefs are different than them, right? Mm-hmm. But they've invited you to come. And so you come and, you know, and and bring Jesus to them by showing them the way that Jesus loves and accepts people. Um, you know, you're not saying, yes, I agree with what you teach. Um, you know, I, boy, if you have, uh, if you have any Jewish friends and and they would ever invite you to a a Passover Seder man, go, right. It's fascinating. Uh, you know, I, I haven't had the opportunity to do that. Um, but I have seen, uh, the, if you ever get a chance to see a Christ in the Passover, presentation um man the the passover is just rife with uh what to christians sure looks like um jesus and the trinity and you know all kinds of stuff and um so it's it's just it's really fascinating but it's you know what if you're if people are going to have jesus in their life he's got to get there somehow all right and he works through his word and if you don't establish relationships with people and show them what God's love is all about, then they're not going to listen. And they're not going to want to listen. But man, you know, man, going out there and caring about people and building relationships and sharing Jesus in that way and stuff, it, it's, it's not as nearly as cool a story as, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, Man, that just, that just, oh man, this blows the whole, whole thing. You know, it's more fun to gossip and blog and, you know, instead of trying to find out what the story is. Um, okay, well, let's end this thing out, uh, way back when, I don't know, when you and I actually talked about this whole issue. I think it was when the rules were first, uh, came out on, um, that the Catholic Church and other groups, these religious groups would be, are required to allow um, for con- to pay for contraception and also for um, uh, like Plan B and L out, which causes uh, early abortions. And um, 
So, uh, um, and we talked then about how, uh, you know, one of the issues that some of the Catholic Church, Church is going to have with this is that some of the agencies, the hospitals and the universities, have not been consistent. Some of them do provide such coverage. Some of them have not. And uh, so, um, so the, the the rule came down is, of course, that they have to do this. They, you know, they are required to provide coverage. Um, <clears throat> and the Catholic Church is like, no, absolutely not. We we you're not going to require us to do this. We are not going to do this. Um, and um, it has just gone wild ever since. This has been huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and and we learned things here. We learned the Republican Party did not understand optics. Um, you know, um, you know, I got into this discussion with a couple of friends of mine. Uh, you know, five men, they're discussing this thing. I said, they are religious leaders. You know, women were on another panel, but, you know, these were bishops and stuff. Because this is at heart for them and for me a religious issue, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and then Rush Limbaugh puts his foot in his mouth and <clears throat> gets the topic off going the wrong direction again, you know. And I keep telling people this is not an issue of contraception. This is an issue strictly of does the state have the right to require the church to do something that it says is against its conscience, right? Right. And now people say, well, okay, um, they're not actually requiring the churches to do this. They're requiring the insurance companies to do this. All right. Problem is, a lot of churches are self insured. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod is. All right. Um, and, uh, and, and so that means that it puts, you know, it's right back. We're, we're self insured. Right. And so therefore, it's us. Okay. It needs to be clear that these are not churches. That we're talking about. These are uh, Catholic organizations that are not churches. If this is St. Mary's Catholic Church or St. Bartholomew's or St. Aloysius, they're fine. You know, nobody can talk to those churches. These are Catholic colleges, universities like Ava Maria and uh, Georgetown and Notre Dame. These are Catholic hospitals, which has a, which is a huge, uh, thing. These are Catholic high schools that are independent of churches. These are, um, Catholic, uh, can Catholic charities, which is a huge social service, uh, organization. So there are a lot of, <clears throat> well, in the Missouri scene, we would call them recognized service organizations. I don't know what the Catholic term is. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are, um, you know, they, they are associated with the church. But they're not churches, right? Um, so and, they still hold to the teachings of the church um, because they are they're they're acting out the faith of the church, right? We hope. But, I mean, it's it's assumed that they are. It's assumed, right? It, they, but that's you know that's now. See, now we get this. For example, this young woman that Rush Limbaugh insulted. Well, what's she? she she's a re- reproductive rights activist. I mean, she's been, you know, well, why did, why did she go to Georgetown? She went there to fight their policy. You know, she's at Georgetown Law School for a reason. And it's not because she was a Catholic who wanted to live out Catholic doctrine. It's because she thought they were wrong and she wanted to fight their, their policy. Well, you know, I mean, you know, if you have a, if you, you, there's a policy there at the school in terms of contraception and what they'll do under their health plan that students have that you think is wrong, don't go there. Mm-hmm. Especially if you know this in advance. She knew this in advance. Go to Harvard. <laughs> go to Yale. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's other schools that you can go to. Good Cornell. I mean, there's good law schools out there you can go to. Um, you got accepted at Georgetown. You get accepted just about any of those. Um, and um, but you know, here's the you know, and and this is this is really weird for us because uh, our uh, Senate President Matt Harrison. Uh, went to Washington and spoke on the all male panel there. Uh, he was visibly angry. He was just really upset. Uh, he did not want to be there. 
he, he rarely debated. He, he said he got 20, called 24 hours in advance, asked if he could be there, or 48 hours, and, you know, he was like, I was just there. I don't know if I want to do this. Um, uh, and, um, you know, and, 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 he, and what he said, you know, you, you, wow, it just made a, a lot of sense. Uh, there's so much of it I like. I mean, he, he really hit Luther's idea of the two kingdoms. This is not something for us to be involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, he did take a swipe at the Obama administration. Our direct experience in the Hosanna Tabor case with one of our congregations gives us no comfort that this, com- this administration will be concerned to guard our free exercise rights. Um, um, you know, uh, um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, what it comes down to, though, the whole hell thing, the, 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 I think the money quote was simply this. Religious people determine what violates their conscience, not the federal government. Right. It's exactly like the Hosanna Tabor case, actually, because you know. in the Hosanna Tabor case, it was what what was the ruling Relig- is that the churches or religious institutions determine what's a minister. Right. Well, it's the same thing. Religious institutions also determine what is their conscience, what is their teaching, and, and you know, and what violates their conscience. And and who's the government to tell us what violates our conscience? Absolutely. Um, I like that. I, I like the way he, he he ended this too. We fought for a free conscience in this country, and we won't give it up without a fight. To paraphrase Martin Luther, the heart and conscience has only room only for God. Not for God and the federal government. The bed is too narrow. The blanket is too short. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I just thought, I had never heard that before. I thought that was uh, yeah, yeah, that was a new one by me. But you know, there also I um I, I tuned in and to watch it live, um and uh, and actually the I really liked the uh, I thought I thought first of all that Patrick Harrison did a phenomenal job, uh, especially on such short notice. Um, I, but the, the priest before that, um, used this analogy. He said, you know, this is essentially, imagine a kosher deli, right? That's told you have to serve ham sandwiches. Like we're a kosher deli. We don't serve ham. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to set up a kiosk at the front of your store that serves ham sandwiches. And so you don't have to serve them. We'll serve them for you. And um and by the way, uh at the end of the um at the end of each month you'll get billed for the ham. <laughs> like uh wait a minute here. But I mean that's essentially what's going on. I thought that was a really good analogy. And the other thing that, that really ought to sort of get people's attention is the fact that on this panel there was also a Jewish rabbi speaking out against it. Right? Why? Because this isn't about contraception. Right? Most Jews are not against contraception. Um, LCMS Lutherans are not. Right. For the most part. Right. And and the thing is, this is this would be an issue even if it weren't for the uh, Plan B and and stuff like that. Okay. Because this is not a, this is not about contraception. This is not about abortion. This is about religious freedom. This is about the government telling us what. We can and can't do as far as what our consciences say. And and what it comes down to, you know, people don't understand this. It's like, okay, look, all right, your offering money goes to pay for your pastor's um, insurance, okay? His insurance um, for most churches uh, in the Missouri Senate, for instance, um, is through Concordia Health Plan, which is a, a part of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Okay, and so, um, and 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 your, um, and also some of your offerings go to the synod, and and I'm assuming the synod gives some money to Concordia Health Plan too. Uh, to, I'm not exactly sure how all that works, but it's all kind of connected, and um, and so so he said, so then that money goes there, and if they're forced to um, to pay for uh for contraceptives, uh, border fashions, then what you have is uh, you're offering money, ultimately paying for mm-hmm. abortion. The, 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 um, I, I mean, 
how can we take care of this? I, I can give you the answer. Very simple. Um, the government would simply pay for it. And so, and you know, if they want these church, they want these insurance companies and others to hand out the stuff for free. You put a tax on the insurance companies, not the self-insurers because you can't really because they're self-insured, but you can the insurance companies. Um, and you know, just like anybody else, I mean, I you know, I may not like my tax money being going to pay for X, Y, or Z, but it does anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there was a Catholic a priest a few years ago. Yeah, uh, he didn't like uh, some of his money going to pay for uh, uh, the war in Iraq, but you know, you can't sit there and say I'm going to withhold part of my money. Right. And you got to pay it anyway, so that's ter- fine. So they go, go to you go to your doctor, whatever tr- hospital, wherever you want, and they dispense. And then uh, are they read the script? You dispense there, or they dispense it at the local CVS or Walgreens or what have you, and the bill goes to the federal government, and the federal government reimburses. Yeah, done. That's simple. That's simple. It takes away all the problems of conscience. Yep. You're not forcing hey. churches to pay for stuff that they disagree with. All right. And, you know, because cause right. here's the thing. Even if we're not against it, even if we're not against this particular thing, all right? All right. So, so we go, well, that's not really a big issue for us. We'll let that one go. Oh, well, what about if they decide that they want to... Um, uh, change the the drinking, uh, you know, alcoholic consumption laws so that uh, no longer are minors or anybody under 21 allowed to have communion wine, you know, or or or, or, or you're no longer allowed to preach uh, in accordance with this um, with this week's theme. Um, you're no longer allowed to preach that practicing homosexuality is a sin. Right. Um, and, and those are things that, you know, can actually happen. There was, a, there was almost picked up the story, except the fact that it's only a proposed law and they, they've tabled it twice. And so, but up in uh, one of the provinces of Alberta, Canada, where, you know, somehow or another, they want to patrol homeschooling parents. Uh, that they cannot say that homosexuality is wrong. And, you know, and, and, and I don't even know how you would do that. But, I mean, uh, uh, but still, it's, you know, there, there's, there's a perfect example of where a, a, you know, without a robust religious freedom, the government will, can and will step in. Mm-hmm. Right. You uh, know, the other thing about this, that with so many of these issues that I don't understand, mm-hmm. is that religious freedom is guaranteed in the Constitution. All right. There's, there's only five th- things in the, it, that are specifically guaranteed in the Constitution, five freedoms in the First Amendment, all right? And religion is one of them, all right? Reproductive rights, uh, you know, like various things that go on in the bedroom. <laughs> um, you know, everything seems to have something to do with sex for some reason, one way or another. Um, all that stuff, right? That stuff is not guaranteed in the Constitution. Now, if you want it to be, we have a system in place that you can make that um, happen if, if enough people think it is. Mm. It's called a constitutional amendment, all right? Um, it's happened in the past, all right? Um, but, uh, you know, this is this trying to sort of skirt around things and and kind of rewrite the constitution without actually amending the constitution that's not the way our government works now that's a there's a sort of civics thing not a a religious thing um you know we we as a church really try to keep our hands out of the government as much as possible uh, individual right. citizens are certainly um as citizens have not only the right but the responsibility to be uh involved in in the government, um, and, and expressing, uh, their concerns and things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, as a church, we, that's, that's a different kingdom. That's a different area. And, um, you know, and I suppose the other thing we should mention with this is that technically, uh, the LCMS does not fall under this because 
when word got out about what the requirements are and stuff, they were going to make some changes that were going to improve the, um, uh, they were going to, uh, it was going to lower the cost and, and just sort of make it a better service. Um, but when they heard about the stuff coming down the pipe, um, they held back and they didn't make those changes that would have been really right. helpful so that they could get grandfathered in and, and right. not fall under it. Uh, which, I mean, so we're still affected by it because right. our, we would have better stuff available if it weren't, if, if they hadn't held back. Right. Yeah. It says, uh, you know, yeah, just, um, uh, unless we follow the very narrow provisions or card under the grandfather clause, um, yeah, I and I, the other thing I liked about what he said, and I just thought, I just thought, because it just says, you know, who we are. You know, the LCMS um, doesn't don't, doesn't distribute voters lists. We don't have a Washington office. We are studiously nonpartisan. So much so, we're often criticized for being quietistic. I'd rather not be here, frankly. Uh, our task is to proclaim in the words of the Blessed Apostle Saint John, the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all our sin, and we care for the needy. We haven't the slightest intention to Christianize the government. Martin Luther famously quipped one time, I'd rather have a smart Turk than a stupid Christian governing me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just thought, yeah, that's just it. You know, we're not, we, we just let us do our thing. Right. Yeah. And then he, he went into this long list of Lutheran malaria initiative and all the different, you know, um, and not all, I mean, just a handful of the, the different things that, that we as a church do for society. Um, we don't expect anything in return. It's just we're just showing people the love of Christ because that's what Christians, that's what Jesus that's is all about. Do. You know, yeah. and um, and we just want to do that. So why don't you just leave us alone so that we can make the world a better place. And, uh, you know, we won't get in anybody's way and, uh, and, and, and we won't step on anybody's toes. And, and we just want to keep doing that. And yep. uh, don't make us stop doing that. Just, 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 you know, that's it. Okay. Well, maybe you see it from a different perspective. Maybe you disagree. I think we, I think we had a, I think we, it was a long show tonight. It was almost an hour, but I think we had a lot of really good topics, a lot of really good discussion. Um, and actually, we could have done an hour on almost any one of these topics by themselves. Mm. We would love to have some of your uh, impact, uh, your, 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 your discussion and your thoughts. Uh, so please send them to us at uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. And as I said, we heard from our friend Carlos this week, who sent us that uh, great story from the Canadian Lutheran, who also, by the way, said he really missed us. So uh, it's, it's good to be back. And we also heard from our friend George, who said there is no such thing as a third use of the law. I'm not even going to go there, George. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we will agree to disagree on this, this, this particular little issue and just move on. Um, I also had a post on YouTube uh, from... Uh or Woman Wonder 10, um, that uh, first she she stepped in and defended us against somebody that uh, like three years ago had said something nasty and on our channel page, and and uh, and so she stepped in and said, what are you talking about? Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and so I appreciated that uh, uh, stepping in and, and speaking on our behalf. And, uh, but she also, uh, commented and said, long story short, please include your thoughts on the faith, please, more often, where possible, um, or able to. It adds a richness to the, sh a richness to the show, at least for me. And I think we try to do that. I mean, sometimes there's stories where, um, where it's, it's kind of, it's more of a political societal kind of thing. And, and we can't. And, and uh, honestly, I mean, let's face it, sometimes we drop the ball. And, uh, and we just, you know, there have been times where I've, I've gotten down and went, oh, yeah, we really should have said this. And I think part of that is just the fact that we're talking about these, um, what oftentimes is like political issues. And we're trying to not be political about it, um, or you know, take political, you know, to be partisan, right? Um, and uh, and and you know, we're talking off the cuff. We we look at the stories in advance, but um, you know, uh, I used to take a lot of notes and stuff like that to about what I was going to say about it and that. I just don't have time for that now, and uh, so you know, we're we're kind of just 
kind of off each other and stuff. And, and so, yeah, yeah, sometimes we miss that and, and I apologize for that because we really, boy, I mean, when it comes down to it is, um, uh, whatever it is that we have to say, there's nothing better, um, that we could possibly have to say, nothing more important, um, than to talk about God's love and, and, uh, you know, the forgiveness that he's given us in Jesus Christ. So that's for sure. That's for, for sure. And it's always a joy to, yeah. Um, well, as always, we thank you all for listening, and we pray then that God will bless and keep you this night and always. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> oh, and just in case, he is risen. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Talk God to bless. you. Whatever. Bye-bye.